Hello and happy Monday. This is Chris coming to you live uh, from the WCA's Facebook page. And hopefully most of you are enjoying a day off. Maybe some of you aren't. Maybe some of you are working. Um, I am actually at home, but I obviously I'm working because I'm here on Facebook. We've committed to you coming. Uh, we've committed to coming to you live on our Facebook page, live at lunch on Mondays and Wednesdays at noon. So here I am. But it is Labor Day, and uh, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Labor Day is an American holiday that has been celebrated since the late 1800s. I believe 1894 is the first day that they celebrated Labor Day um, to celebrate the contributions of American workers all across in all fields and um, forms of uh, working. So um, it's, it's a great holiday. It's a beautiful day outside. If you haven't been outside, the air is a little bit cleared up. We just went on a beautiful hike in the foothills. We took the dog out. It was absolutely wonderful to get outside, um, get a little a bit of exercise and do something that felt a little more close to what I normally might be doing on a lovely um, fall, almost fall weekend, a little bit of spring uh, or fall and Christmas in the air. But it is Labor Day and I know that there's, there's still a lot of things that don't quite seem normal right now. And there's still a lot of people that are dealing with things that aren't normal right now. And at the WCA, we're still experiencing really high requests for service, uh, services related to domestic abuse and sexual assault. We're still experiencing uh, ways that we're trying to figure out, hey, Becca, we're having to figure out how to do our work differently. We're, how, we're figuring out how to come to you virtually um, and figure out how to do our, our outreach and our prevention work. We're figuring out how to um, get really good at delivering all of our our uh, programming services telephonically and through video. So our programming staff is coming to clients to deliver counseling services. And we're doing virtual support groups for uh, survivors of domestic abuse and sexual assault. If any, if any of you need those services, you can um, at, call our business line at 208-343-3688. Again, that's virtual support groups. We're delivering case management um, telephonically and through um, the telehealth Zoom platform. Our financial educator has been um, delivering uh, financial um, education through um, the Zoom platform and through the telephone. And that's one something I wanted to come to you today and talk about because it is Labor Day. So everyone um, hopefully is either getting holiday pay or they have the day off if you're employed. A lot of people are experiencing unemployment right now. Um, which is causing a lot of stress in the homes. It's causing a lot more stress from what we're hearing in the homes where there is already high tension and perhaps some of those abusive behaviors happening or unhealthy behaviors happening. One of the most um, invasive forms of domestic abuse, something that a lot of people don't recognize that actually is abuse, is financial abuse. Financial abuse occurs in almost 99% of abusive relationships and it, it appears actually in most, it starts out appearing in most of dating relationships. It means that you may not have access to your money. It means you may not know about money. It means you may, may be prevented from working actually. And it prevents you from having independence and making choices. So there are, not only are people um, losing jobs right now, we have, are experiencing very high rates of unemployment, but that financial abuse that is again, present in 99% of abusive relationships is increasing significantly. So people who don't have access to their financial records, they may not know what the bank account looks like. They may not have access to those financial resources. They may not have their credit being ruined. Um, we've heard stories actually where, you know, those credit card applications you get in the mail. Well, somebody may be filling out those applications and sending them back and running up credit and ruining credit, thus maintaining that control over someone else because they can't leave. They can't get an apartment. They may not be able to get a job because some job employers, potential employers actually check your credit. Um, if you don't have the capability to read a credit report, understand a re credit report, if you can't actually get a bank account because your credit is ruined. Um, a lot of those things prevent you from leaving an abuser because um, of that financial abuse. But that inability to work, that showing up at an, a place of employment, causing scenes, constantly calling, um, preventing someone from showing up for their scheduled work shifts, um, taking a telephone, um, taking access to the vehicle, um, you know, causing issues with childcare, all of those things so that someone actually can't get to their, their job 
and earn that money or have access to that money so that they can have their own independence and have access to their financial resources is financial abuse and that is domestic abuse. And that is something that a lot of people don't recognize and that a lot of people don't um, understand is an abusive behavior. So when you talk about domestic abuse, when you hear that, which is something we, one of the first questions we actually ask when we go out to do educational presentations when we're talking about domestic abuse is, what do you think about when we say the words domestic abuse? Very rarely does someone say financial abuse. But again, financial abuse is present in 99% of abusive relationships. And that is a statistic that if you go on to um, NCADV, national, the National Association Against Domestic Violence or the National Network to End Domestic Violence, I, if you Google that right now, I think NNEDV is the first um, source that will pop up in your Google search, 99%. Um, so that means, again, not allowing you to work, not allowing you to have access to your money, not knowing what's in the bank account, um, not being able to freely access that, but causing issues, even down to causing issues with you going to work, maintaining a job, allowing to leave the house, um, causing issues with the childcare, so that you have that independent abuse is all about power and control. And that is a way to exert control and keep um, you in the cycle of that violence and the control over the abuser. So that is something I just wanted to bring up and talk about um, on this Labor Day. Well, hopefully everyone is out, hopefully enjoying some relaxing time because um, in this country and in our communities, we're all under a really, um, a lot of stress and pressure. This is unpre an unprecedented time, I think, that we're all experiencing um, between, um, you know, civil rights conversations and some of those um, interpersonal issues that may be causing between friends and families and relationships at work, or just unrest, that uncertainty that that's bringing into our life and our world, and job loss and uncertainty and the, the political discussions that are happening right now. And then just general health, this pandemic, um, the, the stress and the fear or just the uncertainty that that's causing right now. I mean, I'll tell you, we've spent all weekend trying to find just a desk and a printer now or several days for my niece who just started college and we were having trouble just finding those basic things in stores or online. I mean, the ripple down and the ramifications of the time that we're experiencing right now on our lives and our community are pretty significant. So if you think about what that might look like for someone who is in an unhealthy or unsafe household. So the adults, the, the women or men, the elderly people who might be living with um, family members who are supposed to be taking care of them, the children, the children who are not going to school right now or who are staying home from childcare because their parent may not be working or the, um, the adult who's in an, uh, supposed to be in an, a relationship, an intimate partner relationship with someone else and they're, they're isolating, they're quarantining with that person. So the cycles of, um, the, the um, cycle of violence that usually cycles through different phases and those phases are, are happening very, very quickly and rapidly because there's no break in them. There's no, there's no time separation where they're going to work, they're going to church, they're going to their community groups, they're maybe going to the gym. There's no separation. So the cycles are expediting very quickly and we are seeing that at the WCA, our, our calls for services, um, we're watching them very closely and the reports we're hearing, um, you know, on a weekly basis or monthly, you know, now we look at the monthly as, as well, you know, they're doubled. And if you look back to April, which was right after the um, stay at home order um, was in effect here in Idaho, we, we compared that to April of the year prior and our requests for services related to domestic violence increased by 194%. So those are calls to the hotline and those are calls to our business line for people who are calling in. Some of those were prior clients and some and a lot of more new people calling for asking about our services, calling for help, calling for questions. Those are people calling because they were worried about other people, um, but 194% increase. That is mind boggling, mind blowing. And that is, that is people here in Ada County, that's people in Boise, but that's people from outside the area as well. Um, because anybody can call our hotline, which is um, our domestic abuse hotline is 208-343-7025. Anybody can call that hotline anytime. Um, 
and from anywhere. If you've got questions, if you're worried about somebody, um, and you can ask for resources, um, you don't have to be ready to leave a relationship. Um, you can just um, have somebody on the other end of that line to talk to you. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. I do hope that you're getting out, go for a walk around the neighborhood, drop in um, a line, give a phone call, give a text, you know, talk over the fence to a neighbor. Um, those are safe things you can do um, in terms of uh, physically distancing. If you're worried about somebody, do I encourage you to do those things. Write a letter, drop in a postcard, uh, send a text, um, because it's, it is more difficult to keep in touch with people we care about right now, but it is even more important to do so because there are a lot of people who are uh, being isolated um, and feeling isolated and, you know, maybe just feeling depressed. But also for those people who are in homes that may not be safe or in relationships that perhaps were on the borderline of being unhealthy that are venturing into that um, even more unhealthy zone right now. That's how what we can all do is, is make an effort to help our community be a little bit safer and help us all get through this time. So thank you for those who are watching. I see that there's a couple people on here live. My, um, I've got a people. Hey, Brian, thanks for tuning in. Hi, Desiree. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I appreciate everybody who tunes in. And, and for those of you who watch later, uh, thank you for watching our live at lunches. This is a way that we are coming to you. Um, wherever you are, whenever you're watching, we're staying connected. Um, our outreach and prevention team uh, comes to you on Mondays and our philanthropy team comes to you on Wednesdays. And we are making sure that we've got a lineup of some really great folks. We've got some of our court advocacy team and our financial literacy ed educator lined up uh, over the next course of the next few Mondays. They're going to come to you and talk to you about the changes that they have made um, to come and connect with clients virtually. And they'll talk about um, how they're doing that, what that looks like, um, some of the successes they've had and what that means to them. And they're going to introduce themselves and let you know a little bit about themselves. So we appreciate you tuning in and helping us get the word out. We appreciate you being great community members and um, helping us plant the seeds and um, help our community be a little bit more positive. And um, because we do believe that together we can um, come together and we can help our community be healthier. Hey, Jen, nice to see you. I hope you're getting some fun um, relaxing in today. One of my coworkers is on. The vision at the WCA is a community where all individuals thrive in safe and healthy relationships. And we value and depend on all of you to help us achieve that. And we work every day to try and figure out different ways to get the message out and work toward that goal. And we really rely on you, our community, and our Facebook friends um, and our Facebook followers to help us do that. So please share these messages and let us know if there's something you want to hear about. Let us know if there's something we can do um, to achieve that goal or something we can do for you. Again, um, visit our website, wcaboise.org, call our hotlines, um, comment on any of these. Um, after the fact, we try to watch the comments even after we get off live. Um, share the message and uh, together we can, together we can change lives. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you all have a great Labor Day. Get outside. The air is still a little iffy, but man, the sun is out and it is beautiful. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day to be in the Treasure Valley. So thanks everybody. Bye-bye.